Thank you, Jen. Just following up on this very basic but very important question, mm -hmm. you're telling us that the DHS chief has the most recent numbers about how many of these Haitians under the bridge have been sent back and how many have been released into the U.S. The DHS chief is telling us that he doesn't know. So who else can we ask? You can certainly ask the Department of Homeland Security. I am confident, Peter, I am confident he wanted to have the most up-to-date numbers, and we will venture to get you those, I promise you, this afternoon. Is this an issue of not knowing, or is this an issue of a lot more people are being released into the U.S. than are being sent out? That is certainly not the issue. First, I think it's important to reiterate what I conveyed earlier about uh, what the actual process is. Uh, individuals are expelled under Title 42. If they can't be expelled under Title 42, they are put into a removal process. If they are put into a removal process, they're either transported to an ICE facility or released with a legal document. That legal document includes fingerprints, photos, phone numbers, an address in the United States, and a background check. That's the process that transpires. That's a part of our immigration process, regardless of where you're coming from. And just because you keep using Title 42, to defend this administration's immigration policies, that is a Trump era regulation. You guys came in saying that the Trump era immigration policy was very inhumane. Title 42 is not an immigration policy. It is a, it is a health authority because we're in the middle of a pandemic. The Trump administration approach to immigration was inhumane and was immoral. That's why we need to put a new policy in place and we need Congress to pass that policy. Unified control, democratic control of Congress. Many months in office, you have not even tried. Uh, that's not actually true. Well, there's been a, Peter, just to, just factual here, there's okay. been there's been a bill proposed, first day in office. Currently it was proposed as a part of, steps were proposed as part of the reconciliation process. Right, the parliamentarian rejected that proposal. They're going back and proposing new options. President supports that. He would like to see immigration reform passed into law, more humane processes. Just one more. Has President Biden ever been to the southern border? In his life? Yes. I will have to get look back in my history books and check the we, times he's been to the southern we border. We have been looking all morning, and we cannot find any record of him visiting the border as president, vice president, senator, or even as a concerned citizen. Why would that be? I can check and see when the last time or when he may have been. But, le but tell me more about why you're asking. Because this is a president who makes a point when there are disasters in this country, like a wildfire or a hurricane, to go and see for himself firsthand what the needs are of the local community so that he can have an informed POV to make policy. Why doesn't he do that? Uh, why doesn't he go down to Del Rio, Texas and see what's going on? Well, first of all, Peter, I think the situation at the border is the result of a broken system. And the president certainly relies on his experience. So whether it was the work he did to address root causes as vice president, his efforts when he was in the Senate to support comprehensive immigration reform, a steps that at a time were done, being done and worked toward in a bipartisan way, something that uh, certainly we think should be the, the case today. He uses all of his experiences to inform how he governs, how he approaches challenges, and certainly he looks again at the last four years and the, the separation of children who were ripped from the arms of their parents as a way he does not want to proceed. So all of his experiences and his time in office, whether vice President, President, or Senate uh, inform his approach to issues.